And y'all can see, I did not go to a SUNY. I went to a SUNY. But SUNY didn't care about black people. SUNY did not care about black students. SUNY does not care about black students. And that is not okay. So we will march. We'll march in the rain. We'll march in the snow. We'll march in whatever is going at us. Because we'll fight for injustices. We are young, we control the narrative, and we will continue to fight. Am I right? Yeah. This young lady over here, I don't even know how old she is, but she is screaming in that mic because she understands the injustices. And she is fighting for her life, for our rights, for us. If you are not angry, you need to check yourself. Because Tony needs funding. The funds of police and funding is to CUNY. Funding is to communities and to organizations that are on the front lines that are impacted by systematic racism every single day. I can't hear you make some noise. Three hundred. 
of the national party. The national party is free fucking education. I vex, I'm angry, and I'm fucking mad. It's time, come on, take off your fucking shoes. And the governor, take off your fucking shoes. And all those underperforming elected officials, pack your bag up and go. Because enough is enough. I shouldn't be marching. I'm under the weather that's in my bed, taking my medication, or doing something more important. But we have to come out here and rally. They tell you don't march. It took a fucking 45 march to throw down Jericho. And we can throw down City Hall, and we can throw down Albany, and we can even throw down the fucking White House. Enough is enough. fighting for equal rights and justice. Yeah. Yeah. We should never have to be fighting for equality. Yeah. We should never, this should never be going on. Ooh. We have a right, and we have a right for a fair share of the national party. Yeah. I urge you to continue to put pressure on your elected officials. The officials, they have been too comfortable because you have been doing the same fucking rhetoric every year. Voting them back in when they do nothing. The first year they do nothing, vote their ass out. This year, I don't care who was in Congress, I didn't care who was in Assembly, I didn't care who was me. What I did, I voted the fucking name, but I didn't know. Because enough is enough. They have done nothing, nothing, nothing for CUNY. How many of them passed through CUNY? How many of them we shouldn't have in this, this conversation? Is a conversation that should not be on the table. We should have a free funded CUNY. And it's not really free. It's their rights. Nelson Mandela said that education is the only weapon that can change and transform the world. Yes. It is our job, like the young lady said, to carry on where our ancestors left off. So we in these streets, we in their face, all right? And we're not begging for anything. We're demanding that generational wealth that belongs to us anyway. We coming for everything. And we need to let them know. When, if your if your roots, if you if your generational wealth transpacts to you know a plantation, that's my money. Yeah. That's my money, and we want it. I am a revolutionary. I am a revolutionary. Fred Hampton, 21 years old. He was not only bringing black people together, he was bringing everybody together. Rainbow Coalition. They murdered that man, the police and the government, while he slept in his bed with his pregnant wife. His mother and father go to a of him and cry. No parent should outlive their child. No parent should have to should have to listen to a cop coming to their house and telling them that another cop has murdered their baby. No parent. I'm tired. I don't want no more Brianna Taylors. And speaking of Breonna Taylor, we want them cops arrested immediately. Why is the cops not arrested? Went to that woman's house and killed her, an essential worker, while she slept and then sent her man to jail for having a license firearm and trying to protect his home and his girl. They. Beautiful woman.
seven, eight times. She died a violent death because of no knock warrant. So we not free. And we never been free. So our liberation is everything. That is what we are fighting for. When we say we are fighting for CUNY and SUNY and education from 12, from, from kindergarten to 12, we are fighting for liberation. Because none of this I speak to you now that I learned in school. I got a whole GED. I was a straight school to prison pipeline because my mother gave me up as soon as I was born and I was brought up in a foster care system. And I was everything they made me. I was angry, I was violent. You looked at me the wrong way, I will whoop your ass. That's what we gotta understand. They throw us into these systems to make us into something that we're not. in slavery, they didn't want us to read. They didn't want us to learn. But what happened? We learned anyway. We had our own ways, we had our own culture. It's time to get our village back. And white people, come along. But don't come along with no bullshit. I'm so tired of these organizations with white people heading up. We don't need you to head our organization. You can't tell us nothing about being black. But we can tell you something about being white, and that's white privilege, something that we never had. So again, step back. And we gonna step up. My name is Kenesha Grant. I am the CEO of Parent Supporting Parents New York. I am on Twitter. You can follow me at For Our Babies. If you are a parent, if you are a parent and you need somewhere to go, don't nobody know what you're going through like other parents. Fuck these therapists. How many therapists don't even got kids? <laughs> I had a blue-eyed, blonde-haired therapist for about six years until I realized that lady couldn't help me. I need to turn to my people. We need to turn to each other, and we need to rebuild our Wall Street, our community. Yes. We need to promote black business. We need to stop giving our money to these corporations. Yes. That keeps them in power. Yes. Martin said, no, Malcolm said, instead of fighting for the bus, instead of fighting for the seat, we should have fought for the bus. Yes. Martin said, I fear I've led my people into a burning house. When we was going for integration, we should have been going for economic integration. Instead of wanting to sit on a bus, you should have owned that fucking bus. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. Don't, don't teach your children that they're going to go to college and get a good job with somebody. No, the fuck. You teach your kids, they're going to be their own boss. Yeah. My daughter is 26 years old and she has a very successful makeup online. That was glitters. Go check her out. Six years old, she ain't never worked for nobody in her life. And she graduated from a CUNY school. Yeah. And learn your history. Learn your history. Because let me tell you something. Before Ronald Reagan got into office, everybody was going to college for free. Yeah. The FEP, what is it called? The FEP? Is it the FEP? What's the thing, the PAL, what is what's the thing you got paid for school? The PAL. The PAL was paying 80% yes. 
of people's tuition. Ronald Reagan said, why the fuck should federal government pay for them to go to school? And then in turn, the state started saying, why the fuck should we pay for them to go to school? So know your history so you can smack them in the face with it and let them know we ain't going for that no more. You're not going to change the narrative on us. You're not going to call us violent. You're not going to say we tearing down our neighborhood. Because at the end of the fucking day, we don't own this property and neither do you. That's it. I mean, so the federal communities for change, local 100 strategy for Black Lives, uh, DC 37, um, I believe local 100. Where are you at? Come on, make some noise for these fellow organizers that make up the coalition that is known as CUNY Rising Alliance. Uh, Deputy Public Advocate, I want you to come over here too. Cause I want you to take pictures. Oh, I didn't and yeah, we gonna we gonna do some stuff. All right, these organizers, take a look at them. I didn't even know you was here. Take a look at their faces. <laughs> these are my brothers. These are my sisters, and it's black people that is leading this massive coalition to make sure that the City University of New York is free once again. Yeah. So I want y'all to make an, a, a, an outstanding noise for them. Clap it up. They deserve it. They deserve it. I'm just the coordinator. I can't do it without them. If any members from our, our professor, PSC members, make some noise if you're still here. Thank you. Of course, to all of our college graduates, class of 2020, make some noise. To all of our college professors, once again, make some noise. To all of our college alums, make some noise. And most importantly, you, the CUNY community, make some noise. So you've heard from these black and brown powerful scholars. You've heard from me earlier and back in Brooklyn, those who marched with us. Now it's time for action. Somebody say action. All right. So first and foremost, somebody say 2021. All right, 2021 is one of the most important years in our city's history. 36 seats are up for grabs in the city council. Hold on, because that's not the action part yet. The action part is, if there's any black or brown person that is unapologetically ready to run for city council next year, step in the circle right now. I want you to be courageous. I want the city to see who you are. Step in there. 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 That's one, two, three, four. We got 36 seats. That's four. We got 36 seats. That's four. Who else is courageous to step up and run for city council next year? Step in that circle. Step in this action. This is action. This is action. This is action. How many is that? One, two, three. I need more. Where you at? Step in there. Y'all need to be cheering them on, New York City. Y'all need to be cheering them on. Who else? Who else is going to be courageous and get these establishment individuals out of office? Who else is going to be courageous to get these Stevens from Django out of office that only focus on big money instead of people? Who else? Step in. Step in right now. Take your phones out. Take pictures. These are our future. speaking. I do actions for free. Ooh. No, no, stay in the circle. I ain't tell y'all leave. Uh, shine a light on them. Where are my future city council members? Stand right there, right in the circle. Take a good picture. 
I want each of you all to introduce your name and what community you represent, because they need to know who you are right now. This is the campaign for 2021, where everyday New Yorkers, just like these individuals, are stepping up. So you need to know who their names, and we're going to continue from the action from there. So start with you, brother. Tell me your name and what community you represent. What's up, y'all? My name is Jason. I'm representing Brooklyn, best Eye, Clint Hill, 35th District. Alright, so 35th district, that means combo's out. And let me tell you the tea, she's trying to run for Brooklyn Borough President. Are we gonna allow that to happen, Brooklyn? No. Okay, so that's canceled. Thank you. Next, introduce yourself. What community? How you guys doing? My name is Gabriel Diaz. I'm representing the Bronx, Burnside, Chimon Avenue. Yeah. Representing how y'all doing? Yeah. We just got we just got Diaz out. We're on the way to keep getting them out. My name is Gabriel Diaz again. I'm a chess instructor teaching urban urban youth how to teach chess in the hood. And next year to the city council. Let's go. Y'all yeah, heard that. Let's go. Come on up. I'm Celine Daniels and I'm a student from Silver Spring, Maryland. And I'm over here in New York City. I live in Manhattan and I see the injustice every day in Harlem. Oh, so y'all all candidate, okay? Let's yeah. go. What's up, y'all? My name is Ronnie Lewis. I go to the same school Slingo, so I go to American Musical Dramatic Academy for the Arts. And I'm sitting up far right, y'all. Let's do this. Let's go! Who else is candidate? Candidate, candidate? Tell them what community you from. Your name and community. What's up, y'all? My name is Chad Williams. I'm from Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York. Yeah! And a recent college grad, too. My name is Lena Melendez, and I'm from Washington Heights, Hamilton Heights, okay? And we, you got to know that the system is not designed for us to run, okay? The candidates that are part of the Democratic Hack Party has all of the support, all of the money that they need. They're giving it, and they don't have to do shit for it, okay? We gotta work our fucking asses off, and we need you to donate. We don't have the fucking money. We don't have all the support. We need you. Who else is running? Dexter Roberts. Flatbush. Park Heights. East Flatbush. It's time we change the system. I have seen people who had good intentions like my boy Jamal to run for city council and I would see these big established people call you and say come you can't run it's not your time now sit down tell them hell fucking no the time is now thank you who else is running who else is running come on up here say your name and what community hey my name is Ibrahim I just got off the train um I'm from Harlem uh, uh, a couple weeks ago was my first time ever voting. I didn't know I could vote. And now I kind of see more opportunities for myself to better this world, better the system I'm living in for us, for all these people. Any other candidates? Any other candidates? Uh, Ms. Watt, come on. What name is community? Thank you all for being here. My name is Sara Ortiz, originally from... Yes, uh, USS! Yes, USS! Um, I'm representing uh, the CUNY Graduate Center. Uh, newly... Um, I'm the new rep of the International Migration Studies Program and also the um, newly elected, very proudly, um, USS uh, University Student Senate representative uh, for uh, the Graduate Center. So I thank you all for being here. I plan on taking it all the way. I'm initiating a, uh, a class action lawsuit against abusive corporate landlords who, are, who have been victimizing the people. I represent Washington Heights and Inwood. And, um, and they've been victimizing too many black and brown people. When I'm looking around my building and people are getting sick, people are getting asthma and upper respiratory tract infections, it's no accident that black and brown communities have been dying at higher rates. And it's time to till the soil of injustice. Right. It's time to open the closets, bring out the, the skeletons in everyone's closets because we're angry, we're here, we're together, we're unified. And, it, and we, they may have money, but we have people power, and it's, it's not right. over. It's and just the beginning. Very Thank you. Buddy. Thank you. Now, mask off. I need y'all to see me. What's so powerful? Y'all stand right here, candidates. Candidates, no, no, we're going to shine the light on y'all because y'all took courage. Right. Let me tell you something. I'm 34 years old. I ran for city council when I was 31 years old. 
I live in public housing and I'm on my way to be a five-time college graduate representing Kingsborough Houses in Brooklyn. Do you understand? This is a black man from the hood who is a professor, an organizer, a coach, a motivational speaker, and I'm encouraging my people to run for office because that's how you change. I'd rather pay them $150,000 to make the difference than $150 for these individuals that just talk shit and they don't do shit. Disrespectful. Disrespectful to those who stood before them. Individuals like Shirley Chisholm, who disrespects her quotes, calling themselves unbought and unbossed. But as soon as they see a side suitcase of checks and money in their pockets, like, like they didn't ever saw it before, they sell you out for a vote. And if you don't believe me, because I'm a triple prime voter, you know what a triple prime voter is? The triple prime voter is the one that has power and influence to influence those who never voted before to go out and support someone. When campaigns start their campaign, they call us first. You know why they call us first? Because we know that we're going to vote. So I need you to join me in the triple prime voter club. I need you to be just as active in voting as me. Because black people that look like me had to solve a quadratic equation just for the right to vote in the Deep South. Black people had to be hosed down in the streets of Selma, yes. Montgomery, Atlanta, and many other southern cities, all in the name of voting. Black people had to be hosed down and dogs were fed upon us as if we were fresh meat going to the slaughter. All in the name of voting. So when I tell you black people that your vote is just as powerful as a blue chip shareholder in the New York Stock Exchange, when I tell you that your vote is so powerful to your communities next year. And they're gonna smile, shake hands, kiss your babies, jump double dutch, grab a burger, and take one bite out of that good burger that you worked hard for. They're gonna be in their hot ass suits while it's 95 degrees in New York. They're gonna forget that they voted against our principles and our practices and when they come back next year because you know they're coming and when they ask you and when their campaign texts you do we count on your vote do we count on you to support us what are you the black voters going to tell them in 2021 in 2022, what are we going to tell the governor? Well, uh, I got, I got to tell you. I'm gonna give y'all knowledge. New York State is one of the two, if not three, states where a governor can run for life. The governor has been our governor soon to be 12 years. He already said after winning his last term that he's already confident he's gonna win the fourth term. This governor literally said to people, protesters, voters, why are you still protesting? You got what you wanted. We painted Black Lives Matter on the streets of New York. Right? They, 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 they passed 50A and all the bills that 
real elected officials that have been fighting for you have been fighting for many, many years. He said that Eric Garner and those who have fallen didn't die in vain because they shouldn't have, it, it, you know, this was the right time to do it. When they could have passed it five years ago. Let me tell you the truth about black voters who look like you and I, black officials that look like you and I, and they get, you ever watch Django, you know them Stevens in the house, they get so caught up, you gotta blow up the house because they so comfortable in there? Yeah. Andrea Stewart Cousins. Yeah. I'm a triple prom voter, come, come after me, come after me. Assembly member, speaker of the house, Carl Hasty. I ain't even gonna get there yet. No, let me tell you the story about those two. For a long time, there was what New Yorkers call three men in the room. Three men in the room were three white men that sat down and decided how the state budget was gonna operate on behalf of all of us. Black people and people who are allies of us called it out and said we need black leadership to change the three men in the room. And we made that happen. Andrea Stewart Cousins, a black woman, someone who could be someone's grandmother, an auntie, who forgot that growing up, they didn't want her to be where she's at right now. The same people that she's buttering up in Westchester because they got money and funds to support her campaign. They're the same ones that talked about Andrea Stewart Cousins when she even decided to go to college or even thought about the idea of running for office. Shame on you, Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins. Carl Hasty, black man from the BX. Where's my Bronx people at? Where Bronx? Bronx, where you at? A black man who just happens to be a CUNY alum. Became the speaker of the assembly. We, the black community, supported that. We said we need a change. And since he's become the assembly speaker, He's been hiding behind real estate developers. Yes. He's been hiding behind rich interests and interest groups that fund his campaign. How is a black man and a black woman who know the struggles and the history of the city and state of New York are afraid of a white Italian man named Andrew Cuomo who don't know shit about us, whose father during the Central Park Five, matter of fact, the Exonerated Five, did not even stand out in support of the Exonerated Five. Is your black vote worth keeping them in office? No. Is your black vote worth a governor who makes, who is the most paid governor in the country? Over $425,000. Is your vote worth him staying in office? No. Now let me bring it down to the city. Somebody say T. T. 2021. Three candidates running for mayor, as we know thus far. First of all, Mayor de Blasio, once you become Bill de Blasio, we, and I speak on the behalf of all the people of Brooklyn, we don't want you back in our borough no more. You lost all credentials. You lost all respect. You disrespect black and brown people that you know Brooklyn was the centerpiece outside of Harlem for the improvement of black and brown families. And you have the audacity to stand there and say to young active voters, the same time we revealed yesterday, Black Lives Matter Plaza, that why are you mad? You won. Are you serious? Then, you want to talk about an audible, Charlene McRae. First of all, I want to speak on all the people from Barbados. And tell you on behalf of the government of Barbados, you are canceled because you have disrespected 
Caribbean women, when you had the opportunity to change black and brown lives by leading a massive program called New York City Well, a mental health program that was supposed to help black and brown communities, but yet they're not even getting services, they're getting referrals. There are black and brown activists right now who are traumatized because for the first time, they were hit, maced, tased, and abused by the police. And yet, millions of dollars have been put in this program and nothing's been done. And she wants to say, Black Lives Matter. Shut up. And you want to run for Brooklyn Borough President? Voters, are we going to allow that? Let me explain the three candidates. New York City Council Speaker, Corey Johnson. A man who I once respected. Once. But now he's sitting comfortably as the Speaker of the City Council. They're getting ready to do what we are demanding them to do, because otherwise Tuesday is not going to stop. We're going to keep going. Am I right about it? A speaker who claims he knows about public housing, but Massachusetts public housing is not NYCHA. That's right. That's right. Your experiences in public housing is nothing compared to the experiences in pink houses. Right. Nothing compared to experiences in Frederick Douglass houses. Nothing compared to experiences of out of play and power houses. Right. Nothing. So don't use that commercialized white privilege story That's right. to think that you're going to run and become our next mayor. That's right. Say it. Say it. New York City Comptroller Scott Stringer, who twice in Brooklyn messed up the name of our fallen brother, called him Greg Floyd, not once, but twice. And then, an example of privilege, he says, well, I have a friend named Greg Floyd. Let's fact check it. Let's fact check it. Are you serious? I'm calling them out because once again, I'm stressing to voters. This is how you know you have power. When you are a triple prime voter, they can't mess with you. I can say whatever I want because you know why? They're going to be the first ones to send their papers and stuff to me. So I'm standing, I'm educating you because 2021, these are going to be the candidates that's going to go right into that chamber and pass sweeping reform that is going to change the history of New York City. So I'm giving you tools to get ready. Do you understand? Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, Woo! another candidate. Now, of all the three, of all the three, I will give commendations. He has been out here on the streets. Given he has been out here on the streets, I can't deny that. However, however, I want people to know and the voters to know because it sounds like the tea that I've been hearing is his race to lose. You're being put on what? Notice. Somebody say on notice. On notice. Because right now, and I, I have much respect for Eric Adams, but I want you to know the people are pissed off at city politics. The people are pissed off at being taken advantage of your votes. The people are pissed off that instead of being in our houses during this summer afternoon, we are out here doing something that we shouldn't be doing anymore. Why is it that after the state passed these reform laws, the officers still said, fuck all of you, I'm still gonna choke your neck out. So it's not just about police reform. It's about housing reform. It's about education reform. It's about immigration reform. It's about foster care and children's reform. It's about Medicare and medical health reform. It's about climate and environmental justice reform. It's about U.S. military and veterans reform. All in the name of black lives. <laughs> These are the candidates for 2021. Take pictures. Connect with them. 
They're going to need our help. We are part of the Organized Five. Organized Five in the state of New York. Vocal 100, Vocal New York. Citizens Actions of New York. New York Communities for Change, Make the Road, and Indivisible. These are five organizations that when we put in everyday people, we mean it. Right. So organize five, get their information. Get their information, let's start training them to be authentic in their story because I hate when these elected officials say you don't have experience. They've been living, they have enough experience to make the difference that they need. Political experience is not life experience. Political experience is not life experience. So you know what that means. They're not being trained to understand power. We need to train them to be servants of the people. Because when you serve the people, the people will stay. Me. Think about what we did for Diana Richardson, who stood for the community, and the community stood for her. Yes. Think about Jabari Brisport, who I'm proud to say he's my future state senator. Think about Zelno Myri, a proud everyday individual that if you see him on the block pre COVID, He'll be playing basketball with the people. And he voted against that bullshit ass budget. Think about <laughs> all of the real heroes that need help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Khalil Anderson needs help. Who among you in 2022 will run for New York State Assembly and help people like Khalil Anderson pass sweeping reform? where we will never have to worry about demanding that the police department, who has a budget that is more stronger than 10 states, 10 state operating budgets. How is it that they need $6 billion? But CUNY, in order to make it tuition free, only needs two. billion dollars. How is it that the NYPD needs six billion dollars but in order to fix our streets that you know in our communities have been begging to be paved okay. takes more than 1.5 billion dollars. Why is it that the NYPD needs six billion when we need real affordable housing. Not that bullshit AMI index housing. I'm talking about the real housing. That if you know you make less than $36,000 a year, your rent should be reflective off of your income. Why is it? Officers need six billion dollars to have a real life show called How to Get Away with Murder. Why is it that officers, and I know you're listening, why is it that you are okay mentally? How are you okay socially? How are you okay physically? The moment you put on that badge, you know that you are the most hated person on this place, on this earth. How can you be okay wearing a badge and pretend that your job is okay? To my black officers, my God. Do you not remember when you told us 
when you were younger. That one day, I want to be a member of the police department. And black people told you no. Because the moment you do it, you become a part of the police department. But you said to the black community that despite what you may feel, I'm going to come and make the difference. Why are you not calling out those same officers who are corrupt, who are disgusting, who blatantly talks about you in front of your face and behind, on the side and the other side? How is it that you okay standing and protecting these officers who don't give two craps about you? Who will shoot you before they shoot themselves? How is it you are okay being in a space where black people say we can't stand you because that shield that you wear is killing us? How can you be okay protecting a shield of an officer that can stand on someone's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. With his hand in his pocket, he calls for his mama. And as someone who's been in foster care, someone who lost both mom and dad, as well as foster mom, I couldn't even imagine the pain, the fear, and the anguish. Y'all don't understand. Eight minutes and 46 seconds is a long, a long, long damn time. time. And not a single officer in the name of that badge thought it not robbery to help out. This is why we're pissed off. Let me make it very clear. This is why we're upset. This is why we're going to keep hitting these streets. I put my winter clothes away, but I took a picture because I want to let people know come September, October, November, December, we're going to be out here in our Tims. We're going to be out here in our hoodies. We're going to be out here with our warm bottles. So you know we got to keep warm. We're going to be out here with our North Faces, our jackets, because they think that come winter, and phase three and phase four, they're gonna try to distract you and be like, hey, go about your business, but we ain't stopping until we get what we want. Yeah. Majority white students. I should not have to be in a university where professors are in urgent need of black and brown knowledge. Yes. It should not be that in this moment, our universities are not teaching ethnic, black, Puerto Rican, Asian, Hispanic, Judaic, Islamic, Muslim studies in all 26 campuses of CUNY. It's about black history, unapologetically. It's about black contributions, unapologetically. It's about black sacrifices, unapologetically. It's about black stories whose names we will never know that are standing on this hollow ground. Because if you know your history, the African burial ground is more than just a small block. It is about our stories. And to my allies that are non-black, I need you to understand something. These next, the rest of your life, because you're standing with us, it's going to be absolutely uncomfortable. Be I'm, speaking tr I'm speaking truth. I'm speaking truth. I want to speak truth to you. I want you to hear me. Do you understand me? When we tell you our stories, and if your faces get red, good. Because that means you are choosing to listen intently and to envision the pain that we have gone through for over 400 years since our enslaved ancestors were taken away from our beloved Africa. So, as we continue, and I close with this, because it's all about action. 
We got our candidates for 2021. Make some noise for them. <laughs> Connect with them. Clap it up. Keep clapping it up for them. These are your candidates. These are your candidates. This is history right now. These are your candidates. Connect with them. Support them. Those who don't understand, because there's some people, my fellow white brothers and sisters, that are in here, and they're in here for a trend. They TikToking, they tweeting, they Snapchatting, because they think this is a wave. This is not a wave. This is a cataclysmic change in our history. And I need you all to understand, because I'm going to come back out here. Like, the demand has been, I'm going to do some more teachings while I'm out here, because I got y'all. But I need you to understand, right, that when you see us hurt, the same way y'all get fired up when the Yankees win or when a Super Bowl team wins, I need y'all to get fired up for my life. I want y'all to be Pokemon masters. Wait. Hold on, I got you. I, I, don't worry about the rain. I, 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 if you know the rain, my Caribbean people, you've been to a wet set, you know what the rain does. I want y'all to be Pokemon masters, white people. Call out to catch them Karens. Catch them Karens. You gotta catch them all. And I want you to catch them Peters, too. Cause there's some Peters out here. We ain't catch them yet, but they, trust me, they out here. And if you're on live and your friends can't understand this, trust me when I tell you they ain't your friends. Yes. This is for my white brothers and sisters. If they can't stand that you're standing for black lives, they are not your friends. And because you're here, and because you're choosing to be uncomfortable, and you're choosing to listen and to ask questions. I just want to say on behalf of black people, you're all welcome to our barbecue. And if you don't know what the barbecue is, ask any one of us. We'll tell you what that is. It's a symbolism. It's a symbolism. So let's keep fighting. We out here in the rain. We're going to be out here in the storm. We're going to be out there in the snow. We're going to be out here everywhere we go because we're not stopping. This black man who is a four-time graduate of the City University of New York, who's going to be soon will be called Dr. Jamel Henderson in the year 2023, who's a class in the first inaugural class of College of Staten Island. I'm here to let you know, kick down them damn doors, keep on fighting, keep on marching, keep on learning, and let's not stop.